So structurally, we've already identified that that could be a big problem, which might be a reason people would want to kind of experiment with something like a Japanese futon. Yeah. But you mentioned toxins too. What's happening there? Like what is coming off of our mattresses that could be affecting other aspects of our health that's purely not structural? Yeah, yeah. So initially when I transitioned to sleeping on a Japanese futon, I did it for that firmness. Like that was the selling point for me. And it is the selling point for a lot of people. And through making videos, I mean, I've received thousands of comments, people talking about how it's improved their, their sleep, improved their lives. And then I started to see this thread of people talking about like, oh, I switched to these beds because of chemicals. And, mm -hmm. and, and the Japanese futon I, I chose to sleep on was also 100% organic cotton. So I was already kind of checking that box. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I started to do more research on this and kind of, un I feel like uncovered like a huge issue that we have in society. Um, and it, it's becoming more and more of a, of, a, of a popular trend that we're seeing. You know, I, I wanna say this, there's a lot of things that are toxic. Almost everything mm -hmm. in our society is toxic nowadays. And it's easy to kind of get wrapped up in this, like don't drink, you know, don't drink tap water, uh, watch what you're putting on your body from soap, mm -hmm. polyester clothing, and it can kind, kind of get crazy in some sense. But if, you, if, if, if mattresses are toxic, and you're sleeping on them for eight hours a day, or at night, I should say, um, then this is actually a large concern. Mm -hmm. And the reality is they are toxic. So um, there's a few things we could look at here. First things first, polyurethane foam, high-density polyurethane foam is incredibly flammable. So um, they have to be treated with flame retardants. There's actually a mandate that was mandated in 2007 by the US, US Consumer Safety Regulations that mandates all uh, mattresses to be flame retardant in order, for them, in order for them to pass regulations regarding flammability. This hypothetically is to protect people from, you know, fires at, in their home and also to protect the manufacturers from potentially having disastrous fires in the manufacturing mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So polyurethane is incredibly flammable. So it's heavily treated with these flame retardant chemicals. And if you look into what the chemicals they use on these, I mean, it, it, is, it is terrible for your health. Um, there's a lot that goes into it too in the sense that like, um, there isn't regulations on how much of the flame retardants they can use. So even if there are somewhat considered safe levels of a toxic chemical, there's no regulations on how much they can use in the mattress. Mm. So, you, so it ends up being a large issue. And, and some states and some companies are starting to do better about this. You can find you know, chemical-free options. You can find um, flame retardants that are at least safer to use. Um, and then also um, California, as an example, has started to ban or regulate um, what um, chemicals they're using as flame retardants, as well as potentially um, putting a disclaimer on the product saying, hey, this is known in the state of California to cause cancer. If you see that, that's a flame retardant. That's usually what the, the correlation of those two things are. Mm. So when you dive into some of the, the research and the literature on this, it's really interesting. Um, there was a, a case where uh, a woman had a child, and this, this child was seven years old, and she was starting to go through puberty, early onset puberty. She went to a doctor, and the doctor was like, hey, something in your environment is causing this to happen. This is not normal. And I think through her intuition or maybe just process of elimination, she was like, it might be the mattress. She looked up the chemicals that were used in the mattress as flame retardants, and they were brominated chemicals, which are largely banned in California, actually. And these brominated chemicals can actually create estrogen in people. So they were like, we need to get this mattress out of here. So they got the mattress out, reversed the early onset puberty. There was another example of, of this woman who um, had her hair uh, tested, hair analysis, and she had permanent neurological damage. And the test results came back that she had high levels of antimony. And antimony is more toxic than mercury. Damn. It's terrible for your brain. It damages your brain. And she's, she, you know, through process elimination, thought it was the mattress. She had her mattress uh, tested um, with a sample from po high density polyurethane. And this is also a mattress purchased from a big name brand, um, one of the biggest, largest manufacturers in the United States for beds. And this uh, bed came back with 350 times the amount of level, uh, levels of antimony that is considered safe. Wow. I mean, a, a toxic amount of antimony inside of her mattress that she's sleeping on every single night. So this is kind of the, the higher end, like worst case scenario. But what do you think this is potentially doing to you, mm -hmm. even if there's a safe level of antimony? Like, I don't want to sleep on that. Right. And I think this is causing a lot of problems for people um, in their sleep quality, but also potentially other areas of their life. And they might be, you know, blaming it on, you know, say mold or other things when it's actually like, yo, have you looked at your bed? Because mm. it could, that could be the cause of a lot of your issues. So, you know, it's interesting stuff. Also, one thing I'll say on this too, is that people are allergic to polyurethane foam in general. 
there are people that know this or people that don't know it and they think it's something else, but um, there are some people who literally cannot come in contact with that material itself regardless. Um, I think it's I think it's toxic. I don't think people are allergic to this. I think just people are more sensitive yeah. than others. Um, but there's some interesting stuff when it comes to the synthetic material, the chemicals that are used to create these materials, and then the chemicals they have to, to treat these products with when it comes to flame retardants. And it, it, in, in a nutshell, it causes damage to our health in the long term, but also potentially in these cases we see in the short term. Mm. As you're talking, I can only think about the idea that the dose makes the poison, right? So in these extreme cases, you're seeing somebody that got exposed to a radically high amount of this for some reason. Maybe it was a one-off in the production process or maybe they didn't have the capacity internally to detox. But what's the safe level of a poison? And you'd probably argue that it's zero. So you don't even want anything to be 10 times the safe amount. Ideally, we just want these out. And I think I'm going to take a stab at guessing that the real issue here is proximity. Like it's I've, I've heard and I've done the research on things like rugs that can off gas and have these things, but we're also not lying down on our rugs for seven or eight hours a day, mm -hmm. our skin in direct contact with them. This off gassing thing, I'm guessing, doesn't mean that just some of these things are being absorbed through the dermis, which we know is a thing. It happens if you put a nicotine patch on someone, the nicotine goes through the skin into the body. Yeah. Uh, we've talked, we've had the NADS guys on the show before, talked about the dangers of polyester slings in men and basically making them temporarily infertile. So things things on our skin do cause biological effects. So is that something that's exuding off the mattress and potentially going through and being absorbed in our body? Is it a bit of both? Are we breathing this stuff in? Is it like a, a slow kind of toxic load that's just leaching into us? Yeah. So um, first of all, the flame retardants are meant to stay there forever. You know, if they if they left, it would kind of defeat the purpose mm. hypothetically. So, mm. so a lot of these issues are going to be off gassing the entire time that the bed exists. Um, so you have a lot of chemicals, like I say, that go into the process of making the materials and then a lot of chemicals that are used to treat the materials so they don't quote unquote catch on fire. Mm. Um, and in a nutshell, just through, I mean, even if you were say one night sleeping on this, not a big deal, but through years and yeah, years and right. years, this can accumulate, you know, right. through time. And like I said, I think it's easy to, you know, get, oh, I have to, I'm super scared of sleeping on a bed. No, you're, you know, you're fine. But if we can start to kind of look at the areas that we are, um, potentially being exposed to unnatural things and start to improve those areas like polyester clothing, like beds, we can slowly start to reduce the amount of exposure that we have to these toxic chemicals. And once again, like you said, it's like you're sleeping for so long. I mean, you sleep, what, one third of your mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. um, or a third of your life. It's, it's something we need to look at. And like I said, I think for some people, they have these really bad cases where they end up getting exposed to uh, mattresses that have tons of chemicals in them. But you can test your mattress if you really, really wanted to. I bet you, you would find terrible stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Stuff in it that you would want to remove. And if you're, if you're into this you know, health lifestyle, I think it's, it's one of the first areas that you should look for improving your sleep. And it just so happens that no one in, in, in Western America sleeps on anything different besides the westernized bed. Right. And, and companies have found out that people like things soft, you know, um, for some reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I do too. Like you lay in a really soft bed, you're like, wow. You're like, ooh, it's so soft. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't equal a good outcome, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's kind of this re reverse engineering. It is like if we want to get good sleep, we need to figure out what causes good sleep. And just because it's contrary to what we want to think that hard equals good sleep or yeah. firm equals good sleep, that doesn't mean that, um, that that's not true, yeah. right? We need to look at what is actually going to give us the best outcome and be open-minded to the fact that it might not be, you know, what is uh, sold to us on an everyday markets.